bubble thanks to our technology. Fake news is becoming more advanced and threatening societies around the world. We weren't expecting any of this when we created Twitter over 12 years ago. Officials say that they have no reason to believe the Russian cyber attacks will stop. YouTube is being forced to concentrate on cleansing the site. Technology is a thing that exists. I guess. It's somehow seeped into our lives so deeply that it's pretty much impossible for most people to live without it, especially in the world of 2020 where schools and jobs and like everything is online now. But oddly enough, as much as the internet has become so ubiquitous, it's become so streamlined and overly simplified that just a handful of apps or websites have nearly a complete monopoly over people's time. The entire internet, with all its trillions of websites, has been distilled down into almost exclusively social media. When people think the internet, what most people picture in their minds is actually just Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, YouTube, or Snapchat if you're a loser. How many websites do you visit every day? Like three? Five? We all just keep refreshing the same handful of apps hoping that this time will surely fix my mental health and self-esteem issues. I mean, hey, maybe today I'll see a tweet or a meme that'll just turn my whole life around. This idea, more or less, is the central focus of the somewhat new Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. When you look around you, it feels like the world is going crazy. You have to ask yourself, like, is this normal? Or have we all fallen under some kind of spell? This film focuses on a number of things, but mostly on the men who've created this dystopian world of fake internet points and loudly proclaiming on your virtual soapbox how lonely and thirsty you are at any given moment. And how these tech bros, or whatever they're called, are just now realizing that maybe they were the bad guys all along in this kind of self-redemption prodigal son story, after of course they have $300 million in the bank and now suddenly they can afford a conscience. I worked at Facebook in 2011 and 2012. I was one of the really early employees at Instagram. I worked at uh, Google, uh, YouTube, Apple, Google, Twitter, Palm. Facebook had been around for about two years, um, and I was hired to come in and figure out what the business model was going to be for the company. Much like how incredibly wealthy people will harp on about how material things are meaningless and we should all just live a minimalist lifestyle in a tiny house on a hundred acre plot of land. You know, normal people stuff. This documentary has a heavy focus on how technology, social media, algorithms, algorithmic content, Al Gore himself probably, have led to a world of increasingly polarized hate speech, radicalization, echo chambers, you get the idea. All the buzzwords. And of course, having everything run by algorithms has certainly helped exacerbate these problems, but the environment in which these problems were created certainly hasn't helped either. As we meet more and more of these former tech bros in the documentary, we certainly see a very particular pattern emerge that's never once touched on or addressed in this film. Something that almost everyone in the film talks about is how they had no idea this technology would be used in such a way as we see now. Try to get people to understand just how wrong feeds from places like Facebook are. When you go to Google and type in climate change is, you're going to see different results depending on where you live. In certain cities, you're gonna see it autocomplete with climate change is a hoax. In other cases, you're gonna see climate change is causing the destruction of nature. And how could they have predicted this? How could we have known that Facebook or Twitter or whatever would become such deadly weapons in the war of online discourse? But I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who don't look like this who have probably been ringing these bells for quite a while. At its core, however, the social dilemma is really just a glorified mom at a PTA meeting who's blaming her bad parenting on everything and everyone else. Historically, every time a new piece of technology has been created, there's always been pushback from those who stand to lose the most. Like how the telephone disrupted the mail service, how bicycles and cars disrupted the horse industry, how parents and teachers were deathly afraid of fiction books riding their children's brains, and of course we see the same kind of rhetoric today about how video games and social media and Peppa Pig or whatever are ruining children. Everyone fears change and things were always so much better back when I was a kid growing up in the 90s, which is of course 100% true by the way and I'll hear no fuss about it. Almost to a comical degree, technology, mainly social media, is framed as this Skeletor-esque supervillain that's destroying society as we know it. It's the technology's ability to bring out the worst in society. <laughs> Mass chaos, outrage, incivility, lack of trust in each other, that's just society. <laughs> and now society is incapable of 
healing itself and just devolving into a kind of chaos. But we never get the chance to see how society is or would be without it. I think the film would have gotten its point across much better if they had juxtaposed our modern social media world with, say, Anabaptist communities, where technology is much less heavily relied upon and plays a much smaller role in people's lives. Would we really be that much happier without social media? Would something else just take its place? Are we as humans just predisposed to be horrible to each other all the time? Probably. The film relies so heavily on the chicken little sky is falling ramblings of former CEOs and vice presidents and tech engineers regaling us with horror stories they use to illustrate why their kids will never use social media or they aren't allowed to use their phones for more than 30 seconds a day or like whatever it is. Notice that many people in the tech industry don't give these devices to their own children. My kids don't use social media at all. Is that a rule? Is that a... That's a rule. We are zealots about it. We're, we're crazy. And we don't let our kids have really any screen time. But they never seem interested in any positive impacts said technologies have had. How many lifelong friendships have been created due to online games? How many people who are raised in small towns somewhere have been able to find their friends through like subreddits, for example? How about disabled people who can't speak but can have their voices heard through Twitter or Instagram or whatever? How many kids out there suffering through something have found help or solace through YouTube videos or Twitch streams or some kind of online community? Once again, as I stated earlier about how the documentary was produced, we see a very particular group of people who seem unaware or un able to comprehend the points of view of people unlike themselves. The film has this doomsday narrative about how social media and by extension technology itself will eventually destroy humanity. We're all looking out for the moment when technology would overwhelm human strengths and intelligence. But there's this much earlier moment when technology exceeds and overwhelms human weaknesses. Addiction, polarization, radicalization, outrageification, vanityification, the entire thing, and this is checkmate on humanity. But never once is this idea challenged in any way. Everything these people say is presented and interpreted as universal fact. The film laments how technology has created a polarized world where two sides never talk to each other, but the entire film itself is a giant bubble echo chamber of a dozen or so people who just say the same things over and over again and pat themselves on the back. The message of the social dilemma is very clear, but the message itself doesn't really make much sense. The internet and social media have come along and killed most other information industries like magazines, newspapers, books stores, that kind of thing. And now we're being told to delete all social media and get off the internet? To do what exactly? The entire world is built around these apps and social media sites with very few alternatives. It just seems very strange to me that the very people who created this world are now slapping us on the wrists for being forced to be part of it. I mean, it seems kind of crazy, right? It's like the fundamental way that this stuff is designed isn't going in a good direction. Like, the entire thing. So... It sounds crazy to say, we need to change all that. Do you think we're gonna get there? We have to. As I stated in the video, everything we do, for the most part, is online. And if you're like me, then you probably find yourself using the same password over and over again for all your different social media apps, email accounts, subscriptions, whatever. But if that one password gets hacked, then suddenly they could access all your information and before you know it, the entire life you've built online comes crashing down around you. Being someone who uses the internet for almost everything, like most of you I assume because it makes me feel better about myself, it's important to have that extra level of security that Dashlane can give you. Dashlane is a one-stop shop for your digital identity. It manages all your passwords, personal info, financials, whatever you need, making your life safe and more secure. And you can trust Dashlane with all this sensitive information because they use what's called a zero-knowledge architecture, which means that even though you're storing data with Dashlane, they can't see it, send it, or sell it to anyone. It works across all devices, including Apple products, PC, Android, Safari, and Chrome. It also has a secure autofill feature that works for personal information, credit cards, that type of thing, a VPN to prevent someone from tracking you, and they even check to see if your personal information is being sold on the dark web. So to try Dashlane for free, free for life on your first device, go to dashlane.com slash Alex Myers, and you can use my promo code Alex Myers to get 10% off to use Dashlane on all your devices. And of course, thank you to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Now, to be fair, I actually do agree with a lot of what's said in the documentary itself, like what the people themselves are saying. I find myself agreeing with a lot of it. Like, yes, people use social media way too much. Yes, it's all this like fake internet points. None of it's real. Yes, the algorithms are definitely a real thing, which as a YouTuber affects me daily. But my issue is not so much with that information, but with the way it's presented in the documentary, because it's like the way the documentary was shot and produced and edited or whatever, it comes across as this like strangely technophobic, 
almost like propaganda thing in a way where it's like it's like this big old doomsday like the world is ending and it's all your fault because you are on Twitter you know it's very strange and as I mentioned in the video like my biggest issue with the documentary itself is just how like nothing that anyone says is scrutinized in any way it's never like like they don't like dive in to look at like for example they talk about the algorithms and it's like okay but who built the algorithms when were they built what was the situation when they were built like like there's so many factors that go into like who wrote and built these algorithms that are now determining you know what we see on google searches and whatever and that's never really looked into it's just they talk about how everything is done for money and for advertising which is true and that definitely sucks but it's like okay so what's an alternative way of doing it or like who built these systems really like you know they interview like a couple people like individuals but like there's so many more factors that go into this that are never addressed once at the very very beginning of the documentary there's a tiny just 30 second blip where one of the guys says social media has done a lot of good in the world also but then for the next hour and a half it's all about how the world is on fire because of instagram or whatever right but like they never go into like in what ways has social media actually done good like like what is some good that's been done with social media that we can focus on and say like hey we should do more of this instead of this like they never offer that information they just tell us that everything is horrible and it's all because of advertisements okay uh delete your apps i guess and that's it that's it they just leave it at that they don't like give us any like real concrete information we can use hope you enjoyed the video everybody don't forget to subscribe don't forget to ring that bell and all that stuff and i'll see you all next time